Also in the programme today, we'll be hearing from two young filmmakers from Telford. They're both 16 years old, and they'll be telling us about their latest project. That'll be sometime around about 11.30. We will uh, play you that interview I recorded a couple of days ago with the guys. Uh, you can contact the programme as is Girls on Film. Talking of films, later on in the programme, I'm going to be talking to two young filmmakers from Telford. They're both 16 years old, Luke Allen and Alex Yusefi. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a taste of the interview that'll be coming up in the 11 o'clock hour. Here is Luke talking about what got him interested in filmmaking. When I was about 10 or... ...program to the one that comes out of Irvy's Box today. We'll also be talking in the next hour to two young filmmakers in Telford, Alex and Luke, so stay tuned for that after the news. Also in this hour of the programme, later on, I'm going to be talking to two young filmmakers from Telford. They are Luke Allen and Alex Yusefi, so uh, stay tuned for that. That's coming up at just after 11.30 this morning. Inviting you to shake your groove thing. I mentioned a couple of minutes ago that uh, I'm going to be having two young 16-year-old filmmakers on the programme a little bit later on. In fact, they'll be coming up in about half an hour's time. But I thought I'd play you a little clip as a preview to hopefully make you stay tuned to listen to the full interview after 11.30. The two filmmakers are Luke and Alex, and here is Luke telling you how he became interested in filmmaking. When I was about... Survivor on Newport's Nova FM, and that is The Eye of the Tiger. It was the theme to the movie Rocky III. And talking of films, Luke Allen and Alex Yusefi are two 16-year-old filmmakers from Telford. They've started a crowdfunding website to finance their latest project. I caught up with them a couple of days ago and started off by asking Luke how he became interested in filmmaking. When I was about 10 or 11, um, I started messing around on different videos with my granddad and we made a uh, we made a short film called Mr. Middle's Muddles, which is utter trash. But I think on YouTube still. Um, and that's actually where the, the name of the co- of the company, which Alex and I are working on this current project, Mr. Middle Films, comes from as a reference to that. But I just started making these silly films with my granddad and we still work on projects together now. And that. I, I just kind of realized how much fun can be had with a camera and editing software. And then slowly it kind of grew and I started making my own shorts about three or four years ago. And now I eat, sleep and breathe film basically. <laughs> and, and what about you, Alex? What got you hooked on this? So what got me hooked on film really was just like the whole enjoyment of the industry and like watching it was mainly YouTubers who like dissected films and stuff. And it was like, I didn't realize that much thought went into just how a scene looks. So I wanted to sort of like mess around with like how, how I could do that and like how I could change that. And I, I thought that um, the best way to go about that was obviously to just pick like the subject film in school. And then from there I was like, well, this is even more interesting than I originally Mm. thought. And then that's how me and Luke met. So, so what was the first project you worked on together? And how old were you at this stage then when you when you met? Um, we would have been about 14, 14 I think. So yeah. we're talking about, what, two, three that. years ago then, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we were in film class for about a year together. And then we, about a year in, we made our first project, um, which is still there to watch, but I don't think we want people to, oh, do no. we? <laughs> <laughs> uh, which was Con Man Denominator, which okay. was a comedy film about a con man uh, who ends up going undercover as a maths teacher, all the while the real maths teacher gets mistaken for the con man and beat up and asks for money. And the premise in itself is funnier than the execution. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that was kind of where we started. And the one good thing that came out of that is we got a... Uh, um, we got a voice cameo at the start from Carl Pilkington, who's oh, wow. done stuff because we just asked him. <laughs> he said, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, which I think you'll kind of realise towards the uh, the rest of this interview that just asking is asking. exactly yeah. what we do, <laughs> and it usually works. And then looking looking at your website earlier on today, um, there's a film on there called Unstable. Tell us about that because that looks like it was your, was that your first big success together. Uh, that was just me. Unstable was uh, okay. Which was, yeah, it was a film I made in 2019 um, over the summer. I, my parents work with the charity um, Rock Redeeming Our Communities. They run the uh, centres in Telford. 
And so for a, from a very young age, I've been around struggling um, addicts and vulnerable adults. And I'd always felt like they'd been represented wrong in the media. So whilst comedy is my main go of right, way of writing, I did a romantic drama in Unstable. And that I, I think that ended up, yeah, easily the biggest thing <laughs> that I've that I've done. That was great fun. And that kind of just boosted my passion even more. And uh, some of the contacts we made through uh publicizing that and we held the uh, premiere for it and things like that are people who are now we're now working with on this new project right so let's move on to this new project then it's a, a film you're making called reduced to clear is that right yeah and so what is reduced to clear all about yeah alex i'll pass that over to you <laughs> all right all right so reduced to clear is a surrealist comedy short set in a charity shop and it like follows mike he's like a volunteer, like, like he's not he's just started there it's his first proper day and it's like the roughest shift of his life and just nothing yeah. goes right for him yeah yeah and you've got some well-known people going to appear in this film tell us about that uh yeah so i think um we, we've got three names announced so far we have a couple of other people potentially that we're not talking about yet <laughs> but yeah. the, the three names we've got so far uh the main one was ewan mcintosh who is um, playing one of the supporting roles in the film. People may know him best for playing Keith in the UK version of The Office. Mm -hmm. And he's a lovely, lovely bloke who is also now our executive producer for the film. He's really been helping us kind of promote it, get some stuff out there, help with the funding. And if people donate to our crowdfund, a lot of the perks are connected to him, where they can get, you know, like a signed picture from him or a video call with him. There are other stuff, if you're not a fan of Ewan's work for any reason, but that's... He's been a wonderful support, and he's the uh, one of the people we got involved. Um, yeah, Alex, do you want to tell everyone about Alex McQueen? With Alex McQueen, you were more. We we needed a phone operator, and we wanted the well like a well known voice for him. And you you were f like Facebook, right? Yeah, yeah. We yeah. bounced around a couple of ideas of different kind of well known voices in comedy, mm -hmm. and then. Yeah, upon kind of my mutual friends on Facebook was Alex McQueen, who has been in. If if you go, if anyone Google's Alex McQueen, guarantee you've seen him in about five different sitcoms. He is, yeah, he is a very very recognisable. I voice. guess he's one of those faces you kind of recognise and think I've seen him somewhere before without without actually knowing the name Alex McQueen. I was watching Outnumbered with my family the other day, and he popped up in an episode of that, and that was. And I just said to my dad, I was like, "That's Alex McQueen," and he was like. Oh, him! He's been in like everything. <laughs> it was like, yep. <laughs> um, so yeah, Alex McQueen is doing like a little voice cameo for us. And, and there's one he... more name you're allowed to tell me about. Is that right? Yeah. Which which one of us wants to do that one? <laughs> uh, you he was connected to the. How did you meet Simon Fisher Becker? Because this one's more like how you met him. He's more uh, like yeah. how you got him on board, sort of. Yeah. Um, so. When I was working on uh, my first or my last film, Unstable, um, we had a, a wonderful premiere event that my uh, former secondary school, Tel Telford Priory School, where I was at at the time, put this together, this amazing red carpet premiere. And so we started thinking, are there any kind of industry guests we can invite along and make this even more exciting? And um, one of our actors knew uh, Simon Fisher Becker. And so I sent him, uh, Simon, a message on Facebook and we've been in touch ever since. He's guested on a couple of my podcasts. We've, we chat quite often. And so when we wrote the role of the manager in the film, we offered it to Simon. Uh, your listeners may know Simon either for playing uh, the ghost of the Fat Friar in the first Harry Potter movie, mm -hmm. but also he played Doria Maldova in um, Doctor Who for about, I think, four episodes in season five and six. Um, and so, yeah, especially among the Doctor Who fandom, I think... Most people recognise Simon Fisher Becker. So, so when are you actually hoping to start filming on this then? Around August. Yeah, if COVID allows. Yeah, if COVID, yeah, if COVID allows. <laughs> Fingers crossed. You're trying to raise money towards the filming of this. I, I notice you've got your crowdfunding project started. How's that going so far? <laughs> Doing really good, isn't it? A lot, lot better than we expected. So yeah. we set our, our minimum target um uh because neither of us have worked with a budget before we set our minimum target at 750 pounds mm -hmm. 
and we reached that last night at time of recording. So, wow. well, yeah. so I believe you can still donate on the Indiegogo page, and any more just helps the project get bigger. You, yes. you know, you're paying for the actors to travel, like Ewan, for example. He's London based, and so paying for his transport and for the food on set and a couple of specialist props and things. So it's everything. Every little donation helps. It's going to be recorded in Telford. Then is that the plan? Yeah. Yes. And and if people want to donate, how do they do it? The easiest way might be through my website, which will be the link to Indiegogo, because otherwise, if I'm just reading out a long URL, I realise that's yeah. difficult. Well, and it gets um, people to look at your website, of course. Yeah, which is double win. <laughs> just ignore, ignore the con man denominator page and we're fine. Um, so uh, lukeallen.co.uk, it, it'll be on l-u-k-e-a-l-l-e-n.co.uk. Um, and it's literally, I think, the first thing on the homepage. And that'll take you straight to Indiegogo, which is where we're running it. And it's very easy to donate. We've got a whole range of perks available. Anything from a video message just saying thanks from us to signed copies of the script. Yeah. Um, the video opportunity for a video call with Ewan. You get thanks in the end credits if you donate a certain amount. Yeah, you can take a prop uh, from the film home with you. Wow. Um, so, yeah, there's there's a whole range of, of stuff available for all levels of... After this film's finished and done, you're both sort of at college now. What's, what's the future looking like? What are your plans? Do you want to go first, Alex? I mean, we haven't really thought that far ahead, have we? I hopefully... <laughs> We will. We would like to uh, cooperate further, like in the future. When we've thrown around a few ideas, like ooh, the one, like it was, what was it, a rom com? Uh, yeah, I guess we probably shouldn't say too much. But no, no, got, no. That's we've like... got, we've got, a, we've got a rom com idea in the works, which I'm very excited about. I, my, I'd say guilty pleasure, but it's not guilty at all. Yeah. Is Richard Curtis movies? So yes. that that area is always fun well, and exciting. We haven't really got further than coming up with a title and a small premise, though. So like, yeah, it? that's so we, we're hoping to work together again uh, after this. If you know this isn't a horrible, painful experience <laughs> for us. Um, yeah. But so, yeah, we we found especially I think that our our senses of humour have kind of aligned and matched up quite well on this script. Like now when we go back through the script, most jokes that we've got in there, I don't know whether it's no, you who came up with it or me. Neither. Like which is good. And yeah, it's so I'm I think I think we definitely plan to work on stuff together in the future and both probably do our own solo and other projects on the side. But just give people that web address once more then if they want to go to your website. Uh, that's lukeallen.co.uk, L-U-K-E-A-L-L-E-N.co.uk. And if there are any charity shops, uh, people who work in charity shops listening, the whole film is set in a charity shop and we are in desperate need of a location. So if people want to help out in another way and there's a shop that's willing to lend a hand for three days shooting, then get in contact via the website and there should be contact pages there and we'd... Yeah. That'd be really, really helpful. <laughs> You're very appreciated. My thanks to Alex and Yousefi for doing that interview with us here at Nova FM. If you missed the start of it or you'd like to hear it again, I'll play it on tomorrow's programme between 10 o'clock and 1 o'clock. So please join me again tomorrow for that and all the other regular Tuesday features. When I finished the interview with the two guys, I asked them what their favourite record was. And they came up with this one from the movie Notting Hill, released in 1999. It's Ronan Keating and When You Say Nothing At All. Ronan Keating, when you say nothing at all, and we're playing that one especially for Alex Yousefi and for Luke Allen, our two young 16-year-old filmmakers we heard from in this half hour of the programme. Taking us up to the news at 12 o'clock, we are going to levitate. This is Dua Lipa. <laughs> 